Moves us to public comments. Madam uh, Clerk, public comments. All right. We start with. Rabbi Stephen Einstein, followed by former Mayor Beth Prom. Um, Mayor Wagner and uh, Mayor Pro Tem Shea, members of the council. Uh, I'm going to be very brief t uh, tonight. Uh, I came because uh, I thought that you were going to be d discussing the uh, the issue relating to uh, SB 54. Uh, I have appeared at virtually uh, every city council uh, in uh, Orange County over the last uh, couple of months on this matter. And it's so nice to be here. It's calm. It's quiet. Everybody is speaking respectfully. The city is doing city business. Um, uh, you may have read the reports of what it was like in the other places. It was truly horrendous. Um, there were many people who came from out of the area. In every city, overwhelmingly, the residents said, this isn't a matter for our city to be dealing with. Let the, uh, let the courts handle it. But um, there was this traveling group, and they were very discourteous, and they were saying very hateful things. Um, and so I'm very glad that you have chosen not to go that road. I was actually rather surprised when I saw that Irvine, because I know Irvine's reputation, I spend a lot of time here myself and have uh, many friends. As I flashed uh, the, the sign, I am on the executive committee of CLU, which is Clergy and Laity United for Economic Justice. And um, we bring a message of, of hope and of justice where, wherever we go. And so I just want to thank you for essentially not the action, you've taken some wonderful actions today, but the non-action that you have uh, chosen in this regard. Let the, uh, let the courts decide the legal matter and uh, thank you for tending to the, the business of the city and, and keeping people together. We have so many people, uh, friends and neighbors who live in this community who come from other places and we want everybody I know to feel comfortable and, and at home here. So thank you so much. Thank you, Rabbi. From Mayor Crom, followed by Felicity Figueroa. Thank you very much, and thank you for pulling the item. I don't know whether you intend to bring it back. Um, I was here to speak in opposition to your resolution opposing SB 54. Um, I'll be a little briefer, perhaps. I do think it's important to make clear that SB 54 does not require anyone on this city council to violate your oath of office, and nothing about SB 54 protects violent criminals, including undocumented aliens, from being subject to the law. Furthermore, the constitutionality of SB 54 has been affirmed by the courts, and this really wouldn't be about making Irvine safer, and let me commend Irvine for once again uh, achieving safest city in America status, I was very proud to be mayor the first year that we received that, and that was a long time ago. Um, trust between local law enforcement and families of diversity and color uh, working and living here in Irvine needs to be strengthened, not undermined, and um, passage of SB 54 really did put California on the right side of history. Given our profile, Irvine should be a leader, not a follower, when it comes to ensuring that our police department can continue to work as their motto proudly proclaims in partnership with the community. Everyone agrees we need to have real and difficult conversations about how we will secure our borders, overhaul our immigration courts, and determine who can seek asylum and citizenship in our country. Much was discussed tonight on other matters uh, of local control and federal override and state imposition, and the truth is that immigration and immigration enforcement is a jurisdiction of the federal government as set forth in the Constitution. So SB 54 simply affirms the constitutional mandate that local law enforcement does not have the authority to enforce immigration law and should not be conscripted by the federal government to do their work for them. So it's important to be clear that nothing in SB 54 precludes the federal government from carrying out their responsibilities 
or the Irvine Police Department from carrying out theirs. Furthermore, SB 54 permits police and sheriffs to share information and transfer people to immigration authorities if they have been convicted of one of more than 800 crimes codified in the California Trust Act. Fingerprint data from arrestees will continue to be shared with the FBI, which then gives those fingerprints to ICE. Public safety officials will continue to notify the FBI before releasing someone jailed for a misdemeanor who has previously been convicted of a violent felony. And SB 54 requires prison officials to notify the FBI before freeing a violent felon. If you're worried about protecting Irvine tax dollars, you should not be asking our local police to act as federal immigration officials. The truth is SB 54 does not hinder local law enforcement from doing their jobs. It simply protects California cities from being required to do the federal government's job and depleting our own local resources in the process. Our police have done a great job of keeping Irvine residents and businesses safe, so let's not burden them with the responsibilities that are mandated by our Constitution to the federal government and in the process undermine their ability to truly work in partnership with the community. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Felicity Figueroa, followed by Jennifer Lee Coe. Good evening. My name is Felicity Figueroa, and I've lived in Irvine since 1991. I know many of you. Um, Irvine, as we know, is a city of immigrants, as demonstrated by last weekend's wonderful Irvine Global Village, which I'm sure all of you uh, attended. Diverse communities uh, live together here peacefully. School children learn about other cultures in their classrooms and on the playground. It's a harmonious multicultural haven that boasts one of the lowest crime rates in the county, as evidenced by tonight's information. So why was an item added to the meeting agenda that would divide our city and cause discrimination against our Irvine neighbors and friends? Is it pandering to the base? Positioning oneself for higher office? Whatever the motive, it certainly does not have the best interests of Irvine residents at heart. To begin with, SB 54, which is now the law, state law, was found to be in line with the Constitution by a federal judge. It protects people from federal government overreach and ensures that our local law enforcement, our local law enforcement agents can concentrate on local matters and not spend time and our tax money on doing the federal government's work. We are in fact safer because of SB 54, since victims and witnesses to crimes no longer have to worry about their immigration status when speaking with Irvine police officers. In fact, recent studies have shown that since the California Values Act was enacted, crime has actually gone down in uh, Orange County communities. And of course, in the case of serious criminal offenders, SB 54 absolutely allows for cooperation with federal immigration authorities. But bringing up the issue of SB 54 to city council meeting is worse than pointless. Apart from the fact that our city council cannot change state law at its whim, rehashing this legislation opens the door to the vilification of all immigrants and people of color. This morning I attended the Orange County Human Relations annual presentation of their hate crimes report. I learned that this is the third consecutive year of an increase in hate crimes in our county and immigrants and religious minorities are most frequently the victims. As we know, there's a history of white supremacy in this area, as evidenced by the recent PBS documentary documenting hate Charlottesville, half of which, in fact, takes place right here in Orange County. When the language of hate groups is veiled and put forth under the cover of protecting our communities from the other, we normalize it and so increase the likelihood of people acting on their racist beliefs. We need to be aware of this possibility and speak out proactively against instances of discrimination and fear-mongering. A questioning of SB 54 can only divide us and whip up fear and anti-immigrant sentiment. And as a community united in its values of inclusion and diversity, we won't stand for that, not tonight and not in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer Lee. Followed by Farah Khan. Good evening. My name is Jennifer Coe. I'm a proud resident of Irvine. I'm a mother of two who attend Irvine public schools, elementary schools. I serve on our elementary schools PTA. Um, I'm also a law professor. My specialty is immigration law. I teach at Western State College of Law, 
which is also in Irvine, and my research focuses on the federal deportation and detention systems, the harms of deportation, in particular the harms that have been enacted over the past several years, and also on how the federal immigration enforcement system often fails to adhere to the constitutional mandates that exist, such as, such as procedural due process. I direct an immigration clinic where we provide pro bono legal representation to people who are detained at Orange County immigration detention facilities, including the detention facility at Music and at Theo Lacey. And so I see firsthand how deportation and detention destroys families, undermines trust in the government, and tears apart communities, and imposes financial costs on local jurisdictions in throughout the state. And it's for all those reasons that the, Cal the state of California enacted SB 54. Now, while I understand that the SB 54 measure has been continued for this evening, I strongly urge the city council to not allow it to return. I read the memo that Mayor Wagner prepared in connection with requesting that the item be added to the agenda, and I was surprised and disappointed both by the inflammatory language contained in the memo, but I was also caught off guard and noticed that the analysis in that memo reflected a simplistic understanding of the Constitution, the Supremacy Clause, the operation of SB 54, and how immigration law works. It was not grounded in fact or in expert studies on the nature of immigration and the relationship to crime. So again, I urge you not to return it to the agenda. The measure is divisive. As an Irvine resident, I saw other cities introduce uh, these measures in their city councils and how they tore people apart and in many cases left people of color feeling demoralized and unwelcomed. And secretly in my heart of hearts, I was quite proud to see that the Irvine City Council had not allowed the same type of measure to enter this city council's halls earlier this year. As others have noted, the role of police should be to build trust and build safety, including to be able to build trust among immigrant victims and witnesses to crime. This measure or introducing discussion will do none of that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Farah Khan, followed by Kev Abizajian. Mayor Wagner, council members. I'm Farah Khan and a resident of Irvine with kids in our public schools. And I have to admit, I never expected the Irvine City Council to follow the pattern of other smaller and less culturally diverse cities who have chosen to use anti-immigrant rhetoric to whip up fear in their communities. Not once has any one of you spoken out to challenge the travel ban that prevents Irvine residents from traveling to see their families and prevents their families from coming to visit them. Not once have you publicly spoken up for the dreamers who live and work in our city or who attend our local universities. Apparently, that is not a concern, which is surprising given Irvine's diversity. Just last weekend, Irvine hosted the Global Village Festival, an event I have been proud to be a part of for many years. It is literally a celebration of diversity and a testament to the important role immigration has played in our communities and in our county. As a resident of this city, I have been proud. Proud of our inclusiveness, proud of the diversity my children enjoy at their schools, proud of our own immigrant story and the hundreds of other stories shared with us by friends and neighbors. We shouldn't need SB 54 because immigration enforcement is a role for the federal government and our local law enforcement officers should not be doing their job. Unfortunately, we live in unsettling times and demonizing immigrants is a tool being used to divide communities and push political agendas. More than half of the people in Irvine were either born in another country or are strongly connected to an immigrant community. Immigrants contribute to our success as a city in many ways. The federal government has the authority and the tools they need to do their job. Nothing in SB 54 prevents them from doing it. It simply prevents the federal government from requiring local law enforcement from doing their job for them, and in doing so, compromising the strong relationship they have built with the community here. Irvine is a safe city, 
and SB 54 does not com compromise our safety. I was glad to see the item pulled from today's agenda and hope it stays that way for future meetings. Thank you so much. Mr. Zajian, followed by Ben Leffel. Thank you, Mayor and City Council members, for your attention. I am Professor Kev Abizajian, and I come here to speak as a concerned citizen and scientist and not as a UCI representative. For us as residents and re leaders, the safety and security of our community, of course, should come first. And working constructively with that community is essential to our local police force. To quote Irvine Police Chief Hamill, it doesn't matter where you come from, your lifestyle, your language that you speak, what religion you practice, we are your police department and we are here for you. As recognized by local law enforcement, campus leaders, criminologists, and elected officials all over the state, having local police enforce federal immigration law is counterproductive and will, in fact, make us less safe. That's why California SB 54, the California Values Act, is good governance, and the city of Irvine should not challenge it. As UCI campus leaders say, community trust and cooperation are essential to effective law enforcement on campus and other locations. The limited resources of local police departments should not be diverted from this mission to enforce federal immigration laws. My wife, Sharis Kubrin, a professor at UCI and criminologist who researches immigration, along with ben, grad student Ben Luffel, who's speaking after me, they wrote in the periodical The Hill, local immigration enforcement policies do not enhance public safety. These policies aren't just ineffective, they may do more harm than good. Police community relations break down. Enforcing immigration law counteracts efforts to engage more closely with the community. Police need the trust and cooperation of residents, including immigrants, to do their job effectively. And they rely on the willingness of victims and bystanders to cooperate with investigations. Law enforcement leaders, including LAPD's former Chief Beck, worry that local police immigration enforcement is eroding decades of progress. A large part of our city is UCI. That campus community includes Dreamer students, many of them who are Deferred Action Childhood Arrival students. Those students and our entire campus community and city community must feel comfortable being able to come forward when the police, to the police when a crime occurs or when police presence is warranted. We must not and should not break that essential trust between our community and the hardworking men and women of the Irvine Police Department. Thank you. Thank you. Ben Leffel followed by Diane Nyad. Hi, my name is Ben Leffel, sociology PhD candidate in UC Irvine. Uh, speak on sanctuary. Uh, the best evidence we have is that undocumented immigrants do not contribute significantly in any discernible way to violent crime. They're incentivized, in fact, to stay out of trouble. Uh, when we look at sanctuary cities themselves, they either have no relationship to increased crime or in many cases actually have less crime, violent or otherwise, than your average American city. Now there's good reason for this. Uh, that's because in hundreds of case studies in communities and cities across the country, uh, local authorities, when they do not ask residents um, undocumented or otherwise for their citizenship status, there is less attention, there's more trust, as has been repeated tonight over and over again. When there, but when there's more trust, there's more cooperation. When there's more cooperation, there are less incidents, there's lower crime, and the dividend that is delivered from that is greater safety. And that's why it is recognized that uh, sanctuary policy is, in fact, good governance. Of course, Irvine's one of the safest cities in the country, um, and it can remain so. Uh, if it wants to remain safe, it should remain sanctuary. Now, sanctuary status itself is good governance even without considering the fact that it is humane. Sanctuary city status is good governance even without considering the words of former LA Mayor uh, Tom Bradley that uh, although undocumented immigrants in the city aren't necessarily in the country legally, the city still has an obligation nevertheless to provide them services, police, fire, and so forth. 
uh, regardless of their immigration status. So sanctuary policy is good governance and is in promotion of good policing uh, simply because it delivers a safety dividend for all residents. Um, now, upholding the sanctuary state bill is not in violation of an oath of office. Uh, contrary to popular belief, a long tradition of Tenth Amendment case law, uh, the central teaching of it is that the federal government actually cannot force localities to enforce federal policy. Hence, there is no violation. Now, uh, SB 54 also does not prevent Irvine PD from carrying out any duties any more than it does that of Santa Ana, which, by the way, remains a sanctuary city. Um, what it does do is prevent, uh, what the bill does do is prevent police from wasting resources asking residents about their citizenship status or pursuing cases related to their citizenship status. I think we must not waste time trying to solve non-existent problems and at the same time sacrificing greater safety. If we, if we wish to stay safe, we must stay sanctuary. So for these reasons, I urge the city council to not bring it back on the agenda. Thank you very much. Diane Nyad, followed by Nawi, and I am not even going to try your last name. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Diane Need. I'm a 40 year resident of Irvine. Tonight I'm going to read a statement from the League of Women Voters of Orange Coast. The League of Women Voters of Orange Coast supports our state's California Values Act, formerly known as SB 54. This law ensures that eligible individuals are able to seek services from and engage with government agencies without regard to their immigration status. To our great surprise, we find Irvine City Council taking up this issue in a city where we have members and where nearly 50% of our residents have a home language other than English. That does not sound like our Irvine. We urge the City Council of Irvine to represent this community and all its residents by affirming their support for the California Values Act. The League of Women Voters supports a system for unauthorized immigrants already in the country to earn legal status including citizenship by paying taxes, learning English, studying civics, and meeting other relevant criteria. Oh, my phone's ringing. The League believes that no person or group should suffer legal, economic, or administrative discrimination. We also believe in protecting families and in supporting their unification through the immigration process. Undocumented immigrants are part of our families, schools, churches, community organizations, and workplaces. Some own homes, run businesses, work in our professions, and are active in other ways in our communities. Their children, many of whom are citizens, may be found in our schools and colleges, places of worship, community organizations, and workplaces. Living out the dream and life path followed by our ancestors is, is the dream of most uh, people. Living out the dream and life path followed by the ancestors of most Americans. Supporting families is a California value, and we believe an Irvine value. Thank you. Up next will be Tammy Kim. I apologize. How do you say your last name? Oh, with Silo Oh, that yeah, way. of course. Okay. <laughs> no? That's okay. It's okay. Um, so Go ahead. I've been going to different city council meetings regarding this issue, and usually the opposition are usually white supremacists, and they say they're not white supremacists, but you look at the records, and you see who, who they are associated with, they're white supremacists, and a lot of them have felons. So I'm glad they're not here today. But um, I wanted to talk about me as a Mexican, and pers Mexican indigenous person. Many of my family members or people that I know were undocumented, now they're not, but they worked in the city of Irvine. They helped beautify Irvine with the landscapers, with the construction. And what, what I find funny is like, like Republicans especially, some, sometimes Democrats, they say they wanna deport quote unquote illegals or I, what I call undocumented. Um, but they never go after the employers. It's funny how they never go after the employers. Isn't hiring undocumented people illegal they never say go after the employers and i see the most anti so-called illegal immigration advocate hires undocumented person how do i know i know by experience a lot of these politicians say we got to deport it doesn't matter we got to deport and then i see like like somebody that i know that one of my neighbors they just uh, changing their, their kids diapers or doing gardening at their work so i see a lot of a lot of hypocrites when it comes to this this issue i also want to talk about not 
people always say we're all immigrants. Well, not if you're an indigenous person. There's no way you're an immigrant. The Hachiman were the original people from this area, Irvine, in Southern California, and also the Tonva. And a lot of times, city councils don't want to recognize that or even talk about that. In my opinion, instead of talking about all this hate, you guys should be talking about building a statue, a monument for the original people of Irvine, which I don't see no, maybe there is, but I haven't seen a monument to the Hachiman people. They have suffered through genocide. They have suffered, um, they're not even recognized by the federal government. And those are the issues that Irvine should be talking about. When I think about Irvine, I think about a diverse city. I was surprised when I heard about, about SB for um, the, the bill t being talked about today. I was surprised SB 54, they're gonna talk about it. I'm with Irvine, of all cities. 54, yeah, 54. And um, so again, um, I just wanna, um, wanna talk about this because I know by experience, Irvine, people that live in Irvine do hire undocumented people. And a lot of the, and that's why a lot of places here look beautiful because the people on the front lines of making this place beautiful are people that have to be undocumented people that I see as indigenous people because that border crossed us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tammy Kim followed by Joe McLaughlin. Thank you, members, um, the council and Mayor Wagner. So my name is Tammy Kim. I'm the co-founder and managing director of the Korean American Center here in Irvine. So Mayor Wagner, I'd like to thank you again for coming and celebrating with us a few weeks ago as we received our designation from the South Korean government to promote Korean language and culture here, not only in Irvine, um, but for the entire county. But I come here today as a private citizen who's lived in Irvine for the past 13 years. And for the past several years, I've also served on the steering committee of the Irvine Global Village Festival, which was just held this past weekend. So I find the timing of all of this very ironic, given that we had tens of thousands of visitors enjoying Irvine's rich diversity. Irvine is a model city that is envied throughout the globe. Irvine is a global village, and our multicultural community is what makes us so strong. It's because of our diverse community is why families want to move here. It's what makes our school so great and why businesses want to come here. The entire world is looking at us with extreme admiration. So as the, you know, what was explained in the memo, I was actually very surprised. Um, I was actually very shocked personally and a bit hurt by the rhetoric. Um, so SB 54 protects our cities and helps our police. Why is Irvine one of the safest cities in the entire United States. It is because we feel safe, we feel protected by our police, regardless of our immigration status. In the memo, it was quoted as saying, I believe strongly that criminals responsible for violent and heinous crimes against people of Irvine must be subject to all applicable laws, including America's immigration laws. And I'm asking myself, what violent and heinous crimes committed by illegal immigrants against the people of Irvine are we discussing? To me, I felt this was downright fear-mongering. This was xenophobic and anti-immigrant rhetoric that is nothing more than dividing our communities and creating problems where problems don't exist. And so I stand here today to support Irvine's rich multicultural community and to recognize the contributions that immigrants such as myself have made to this city. And so to go against SB 54 is is against our city's best interests. So rather than allowing our city to be bullied by outside extreme alt-right interests, our city must continue to be thought leaders and innovators. We must find ways to lead green technology uh, revolution. We have to mitigate traffic congestion, over development, creating solutions for affordable housing. So this is not where our council needs to be placing our priorities. We are better than this. So thank you very much for removing it off the agenda and thank you council member Fox for the op-ed. Thank you. Joe McLaughlin followed by Alice Lee.
Council, hi, I'm Joe McLaughlin. I live at 54 Bamboo in a Northwood neighborhood here in Irvine after two years. Uh, I live here and I'm a voter here, as many of us are. We vote. Uh, I come to tell you that this proposal is to oppose SB 54 is stupid and vicious and racist. It's stupid because it will lead, opposing SB 54 will lead actually to more crime as been pointed out. When residents of Irvine, when immigrants are afraid to report crimes to the police, criminals go unreported, uncaught, that leads to more crime. If people are afraid to talk to the police because of their, their status, because they're afraid that they or their family members will be uh, reported to ICE, uh, that will lead to more crime. And that is a fact. It's vicious, honestly, because it, it supports the agenda of this administration, uh, which is happy putting children in cages. Uh, it's racist on its face. Uh, the advocates of this on a national level, as Mayor Wagner, as you well know, unfortunately, as other members of council know, uh, is a racist agenda. Also, the earlier discussion about the Farm Bill and toxic pesticides and discussion of local control is highly ironic. Uh, this is an example where our mayor, by attempting to put this resolution forward and withdrawing it, thankfully, uh, is going to give up local control. He's willing to give up local policing. He's willing to invite federal immigration authorities into Irvine jails. So uh, it's ironic to say the least, it's hypocritical at least. I want to commend uh, Councilmember Fox for supporting the withdrawal of this. I want to commend Farah Khan, Kev Abzajian, and many other community leaders and members here today. Uh, this is really bad. It's really bad in so many ways. I hope this is the end of it. Uh, thank you so much. Alice Lee, followed by Tim Pham. Good evening. Uh, my name is Alice. I work at Korean Resource Center located in Fullerton. Uh, I also went to UCLA, like the mayor here, and I have a lot of friends from UCI who work and intern at our organization. And I think I heard from someone that UCLA and UCI have the highest undocumented student population, which is about 600. And I know, I know a lot of students at Irvine Valley College who are also undocumented. I've worked with um, kindergarten, elementary, middle school, high school students, high school students, who are also undocumented or have family members that are undocumented. So I am familiar with my undocumented immigrant community in Irvine, and I, I'm not sure if this is the right number. About 10% of your city's residents are undocumented or impacted by immigration policies. And I just want to say that you are really terrorizing my people that I work with and terrorizing your immigrant residents to get your name out for re-election or whatever personal interest you, are, you have is a really inhumane, horrible way to promote your campaign. Um, I'm gonna save you and myself some time. Like people, others have explained legal reasons and economical reasons why you should be supporting SB 54, not opposing it for the safety and well-being of your city. So I'm, if it's not for those reasons, I can only think that your reasoning is based on your self-interest. Maybe you don't like immigrants or something. You don't have good feelings towards immigrants. That's not my concern. But my only concern is that please really like read, read the researches from UCI Law School. Like the professors have conducted a decade-long research on how SB 54 could impact communities here. So read those researches and really like save your tax dollars. Don't make your, don't assign powers and responsibilities of federal officers to your local law enforcement, uh, local law enforcement officers, they're already busy with um, keeping Irvine safe. So save tax dollars, please really start paying attention to what your UCI law school um, professors are writing in regarding SB 54 and please save our time, our tax dollar, our, our resources and support SB 54. Thank you. Tim Pham followed by Rebecca Whitehead. Hello, Council. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm going to start with a different track. Um, yesterday was the Mid-Autumn Mid Festival, 
which is usually held on the 15th day of the eighth lunar month. It is celebrated in um, Chinese, Korean, Vietnamese culture to honor the end of the autumn harvest, uh, to gather with community and family to celebrate, to light lanterns um, and eat mooncakes. These are, this is a mooncake. It's made of lotus, eggs, other things. So, um, and it, it's, it's kind of like an, uh, an Asian Thanksgiving of sorts, right? Time just to celebrate with your friends and your family and just remember what you know, you're there for. And it's really for the children. But humor me for a moment and imagine that one year, the, the crops have a bad year, and instead of rain that falls from the sky, it's, it's bullets and bombs. And maybe it's time to leave. And maybe it's time to cross the seas or the desert and to travel and leave everything behind to new lands and new opportunities. But when you arrive to this country we call America, and you're being told that you are taking away their jobs, you are endangering public safety, that you should have came the legal way, um, how many of you would have told your children to, uh, oh, I'll wait 15 years, 20 years in this backlog immigration system for a chance for my children to survive? Because how many of you that say that you stand for legal immigration Will you stand up when Trump slashed the refugee ca uh, cap from 100,000 to just 30,000 last week? When they want to end family-based immigration visas? When they want to institute a public charge system where you can no longer get citizenship if you get benefits? Because this country and this county and this city, it shouldn't just be a haven for highly educated, the English-speaking, high-skilled immigrants who show some potential to contribute to America's economy. This country was a haven for all of us, for the refugees, the braceros, the rail workers, the people who built this country. I would ask you to remember that we are here for equality. We are here to remember that all of us deserve to be treated equally, regardless of our statuses. And you should remember that while Orange County's immigrant population has increased about 134% since the 1980s, crime has dropped. Crime has dropped in this county. This is the safest city in America, perhaps. And when we, we talk about division um, and, and fear-mongering and the politics of hate that has cascaded from Donald Trump to Mimi Walters and Don Barnes, I ask you to stand up today and reject that. And I thank you to Melissa Fox for writing your op-ed in the Voice of OC. And if you want this, it's yours. And thank you to everyone in this room for speaking up today. I urge the city to not continue any resolutions regarding SB 54 unless it's to declare that Irvine is a sanctuary city, is supportive of immigrants, all immigrants. Thank you. Rebecca Whitehead, followed by Jacob Soriano. Hello again, my name is Rebecca, and I'm a three-year resident of Irvine. I'm 20 years old, and I came straight here from my class at OCC, where many of my fellow students are also undocumented and need sanctuary. And yes, even though OCC is in Costa Mesa, many of us still live in the city of Irvine, and they need sanctuary. And I'm here to ask that the council never places an agenda item to end sanctuary again, or even consider it. I'm the grandchild of North Korean refugees. My family fled North Korea because of corrupt governments, violence, and lack of resources. And these are the same reasons many immigrants are facing, are fleeing to the United States today. But they're not granted the same status. Immigrants like my grandfather helped develop aerospace technology that is now used in our US military. Immigrants help the United States. But that also should not be the only argument that surrounds immigrants, not just in bettering the United States, but also humanity. Because when we think of immigration, we can't think of it as simply filling out a paperwork, checking off a box, and sending it off. We have to evaluate the barriers that exist in these home countries that make it so people have to come undocumented and stay undocumented. Many people don't have access to language, like reading and writing. You need that to fill out paperwork. And also, if you're facing violence, or if you are an identity such as queer or trans, you might not want to present yourself to your government in fear of being targeted. Now, we have to evaluate these barriers as well to show why we need sanctuary. Immigration is not easy, and we cannot treat it as such. Therefore, the undocumented immigrants who are still here in the United States, and specifically in Irvine, 
need you to keep this a sanctuary city because everybody deserves safety and everybody deserves humanity. And even if you don't buy those arguments, which honestly, if you're not for humanity, I don't know. There's no hope, I guess. But you should also consider the benefits that immigrants do bring to this country. It's the best solution to have sanctuary. Many of the people who have already spoke have echoed these impacts way better than I honestly could at 20 years old. So therefore, I'm here to ask you that you must keep sanctuary in Irvine. And by doing so, you are turning your backs on the people who need you the most. Jacob Soriano, followed by Rebecca Newman. Hello, uh, City Council. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak today. Um, I uh, wasn't ready for this, but I just uh, roll with the punches sometimes. So um, this is a letter um, written by Abby uh, Reyes and uh, Mr. Gandhi, uh, who's a teacher at UCI. Uh, so it says, um, Dear Irvine City Council, we are an Irvine family from, from UC Irvine. We support SB 54's protection of sanctuary for immigrants. We were dis dismayed to learn that the mayor thought to put SB 54 on the city agenda. If any discussion should ensue, it should be regarding how Irvine can augment the state's leadership in protecting uh, sanctuary here. And uh, as a dreamer, I am actually proud to deliver this letter to um, all of you. Thank you for your time. Uh, Rebecca Newman followed by Nusha Salemi. Good evening, my name is Rebecca Newman and you have a letter from me in your packets because I'm president of the League of Women Voters of Orange Coast but we had a little conflict involving a birthday call with a grandchild. So Diane came to read our letter in case I did not arrive. So I wanted to say something else. First of all, I moved to Irvine in 1968 to go to school. We lived here from 68 to 72 in married student housing. And then uh, from 1974 to 77, I lived in Guadalajara, Mexico, and I'm gonna say something about that. I returned to uh, Irvine in uh, 1992 and have lived here ever since. And here's what I wanna say about my time in Guadalajara. We went to Guadalajara because my late first husband wanted to go to medical school, and he was a little too old to get into an American school. So we moved to Mexico, and he learned Spanish, and then he went to medical school, and I taught, and our children went to bilingual schools. It was a very different time. We were welcomed by the Mexican community with open arms. Being an American was something special. They thought of our country as a special place, we had the Statue of Liberty. We talked about you're tired, you're poor, you're hungry. We were very poor when we lived in Mexico. I was working at one point for $16 a week, teaching English in a local nursery school. We ate a lot of beans and rice. My husband went to the United States to study for a semester, something that Mexico permitted. And while he was gone, I got very sick. We couldn't afford a telephone and there weren't any in our neighborhood, but my daughter managed to go down to the local police station and make a call to be sure that I would not be missed at school. And someone took me to the Green Cross, which is Mexico's health system, Medicare for all in Mexico. I was a foreigner. I was working in Mexico, so I was a part of their social security system. There were no barriers and I'm, I just weep to see the point we've come to now between our two countries and so many other countries having been a beacon of hope and promise for so many people for so long. Please don't revisit this subject. Thank you. Lucia Salemi. All right, Robin Gurian. Uh, followed by Luis Aleman. Uh, so I won't take a lot of time because most of what I've wanted to say was taken up by everybody. I thought I was going to have the opportunity to bring out the irony of the, um, the farm bill 
local control, op opposing the Farm Bill of local control, but um, Joe, I guess, great minds, you know. Um, so uh, once again, just pointing out the incredible irony of, uh, of taking up, considering taking up uh, this uh, opposition of SB 54 at a time when the city of Irvine has been noticed to be one of the safest cities in the country, uh, three days after we celebrate our diversity with the Global Village. Uh, I, I, I'm actually thrilled, delighted to know that you took the item off the agenda and I hope it never comes back. Luis Allman followed by Tim Burns. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Luis Aleman, and I, uh, when I, I'm an originally an LA County native, and when I came to Orange County, the reason I came to Orange County was to attend UCI, UC Irvine. I'm a proud graduate of UC Irvine, and one of the things that attracted me to Irvine and that let me get my place started here in Orange County was the quality of the people here and the niceness of the people and the openness of this diverse community. And also, I want to thank you know Councilmember Fox for the op-ed in the Voice of OC, as well as Councilmember. Beth Crom for the great uh, words she said, and also for uh, Farrah Khan for coming to this meeting and speaking about this important issue. And when I saw this was on the agenda, I thought, is this high crime Irvine, you know, the place where you walk out on the street and you get shot every day? Because, I mean, I don't remember that since I've Irvine. So I thought, okay, maybe it's not high crime Irvine. Maybe you get, I don't know, mugged when you walk down the street. Or, or maybe just Irvine is like, becomes a war zone. But I walked into the city council meeting, I drove, and I got lunch here, and surprisingly, I wasn't mugged, raped, or shot. So, you know, it's one of the things that we always hear about SD54, that it would allow these folks to come out of the woodwards. But the reality is that Irvine is a very diverse community. It's a community made of folks that come from Southeast Asia, and come from south of the border, and come from other states, because Irvine is a melting pot. I mean, we had a sister cities program in other cities, and the whole point of that program was so that we had that diversity of thought and inclusion in other places that didn't look like us. I mean, for crying out loud, there's a place, the city called Irvine in China, right? That shows how much people look to our, to this city uh, for leadership on the issues of diversity. And I'm glad that the item was removed. I mean, I think it prevented a lot of unnecessary hardship and hatred and rhetoric coming up there. I know there's probably some other reason why the item was put up there, but I mean, I remind folks that Yes, the Board of Supervisors is an important position, but that election is into 2020, and, and if it's earlier, it's because Todd Spitzer wins, but Todd hasn't won yet, so don't count your eggs before they hatch. So if you want to introduce a resolution, do it in favor of the city, not That's for... That's exactly when you count your eggs. Otherwise, you have chickens. That's true. Don't count your chickens before they're hatched. Go yeah, ahead. But sometimes when you put the eggs in the freezer, the chickens won't hatch. <laughs> <laughs> so I would just say, before you, know, before you do that, make sure the eggs are fertilized. But thank you for not putting this up there. Don't take it up. And remember, for every political decision you make, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if we take this up again some other month or another month, we'll be out here to remind you that this is wrong and that this city is inclusive and that supporting these policies go against the nature of the city and the residents of the city. Thank you. They don't teach farming, I guess, at UCI. Uh, Tim Burns, followed by Aaron Roberts. Thank you, Mayor Wagner, Mayor Pro Tem Shea, and members of the council. I have lived and worked and voted in Irvine for 21 years. And we all know that Irvine is one of the safest cities in the country. If we want to keep it that way, it's important that all of our neighbors feel comfortable interacting with local law enforcement when they are victims of crime, when they witness a crime, or simply want to help prevent crime. This impacts domestic violence, burglary, assault, and many other crimes. Our public safety depends on all of our neighbors feeling comfortable talking to the police. If you ask the leadership of the Irvine Police Department, or any police department for that matter, they will tell you the same thing. We also know that there is an inverse correlation between immigration and crime. This is what published research and data show us. It's incumbent upon those of us who have even a little bit of privilege a little bit of agency to stand up for the most vulnerable members of our society. If we do not, then what is the point of all of our education, wealth, and advantages? 
For those of us who will never live in fear of our government, who will never be afraid to interact with local law enforcement, who will never know any kind of incarceration or deportation, it is a moral imperative that we stand alongside those who do not enjoy the same privileges and comforts. For the last three months, I've been making weekly visits to detained immigrants held by ICE right here in Orange County. I have heard many stories from asylum seekers and others who, for a variety of reasons, lack the documentation that most of us enjoy. These stories are real, they are serious, and they are happening right here in our name with our tax dollars. We should all remember that seeking asylum is legal under U.S. and international law. In Irvine and throughout the U.S., we do not merely accept immigrants, we depend on them. Here in Irvine, there are no problems deriving from undocumented immigrants, except those problems that we create for political reasons. Why are we here discussing this issue tonight? Why was it on the agenda? What is the problem that we are trying to solve? Is there a problem, or is this political posturing? I believe we are discussing this tonight because of the same fears, the same nativist instincts that gave us the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882, the Korematsu decision in 1944, where the Supreme Court ruled that concentration camps based on race were constitutional. The same politics that had us turn away many Jewish refugees at the time of the Nazi Holocaust, and some of the same impulses that led to the Brexit vote in the UK and put Stephen Miller and his ilk in the White House. There are no good reasons for this topic to have been on the agenda here tonight, but there are many bad reasons. In the long run, this fear-mongering and nativism will be put down. History will record this as another temporary setback on the path to equal justice under law. I hope that together we can do the right thing and stand by and stand up for the California Values Act, SB 54, and together do our part to put this unfortunate ugliness behind us. Thank you for the time to speak and for listening. Thank you. Aaron Roberts. Followed by Brigitte. Good evening, Council. Uh, my name is Erin Roberts. I am a student at Orange Coast College. I will be submitting my application to uh, University of California, Irvine in November. Um, unlike many of our speakers tonight, I obviously am not an immigrant. Uh, however, I am a survivor of sexual violence. And as such, I understand the many barriers that can prevent one from reporting sexual violence. And one of those barriers that SB 54 prevents is the, uh, the, the danger of deportation. And when somebody is afraid that their undocumented status can potentially lead to deportation if they report a, an act of sexual violence or domestic violence against them, what that leads to is perpetrators of sexual violence or domestic violence being out in our public to potentially assault again. And as Louise Aleman said before me, he said that what the perception of this law, SB 54, is, is that potentially it will lead to criminals coming out of the woodwork and allowing them to commit crimes all over the place. But actually, what happens when SB 54 is removed is that criminals will come out of the woodwork because they are protected by the barrier that it puts in place for reporting these crimes. So what we have seen over the last week is millions of people coming out online to share why they didn't report their sexual assault or their incident of domestic violence. And what I implore all of you to do today is to not put another barrier in place for them not to report these crimes against them so that more criminals will not continue to run free on our streets. Irvine has long been a leader in safety and protection for families in Orange County. And what I ask today is that we continue to be that way by maintaining our sanctuary status and not imposing more barriers for people to report these crimes. And we continue to not allow these criminals to be on our streets. Thank you. Brigitte, followed by Tracy Law. Um, Mr. Mayor, Honorable Council, um, uh, 
I know you think I'm just another pretty face behind this uh, counter, but I, I'm witnessing something very interesting. We're hearing from the voice of the Utes, and, and you've demonstrated that this uh, uh, board isn't just good leadership, you're proactive in your leadership, which is really uh, speaks volumes. But um, at the risk of being a turd in the punch bowl, I'm sort of gonna jump off the reservation I'm giving you a handout. Uh, it's entitled Probate Gate. Um, sorry, I can't even read my line. The New Scandal That Warrants an Investigation by Department of Justice. And I'm here, you know, if you think I'm just a pretty face, I'm an intrepid reporter. And if I could just read, everybody knows about the Watergate scandal. We all know about the Bell scandal. Bell scandal wasn't because of an intrepid reporter was looking under the bushes. That was found out by accident. He was on a balance sheet and he goes, whoa, wait a minute, look at over here. Well, I'm here to tell you guys that there is some shenanigans going on at the Board of Supervisors to the degree that it's going to affect everybody in this room. In fact, today, 229 years ago, something really remarkable happened, and that's relative to what you guys have been talking about, is that the leaders in Congress passed 12 amendments that we know of as a Bill of Rights, which is pretty incredible. There are these, you know, our vets die for these right for us to speak. You give people time to speak, you change the date so you don't uh, uh, offend a religious group, which is remarkable, whereas over there, Elia Seglin can't even speak over there. Oh, you're off topic, nonsense. But I'm here to tell you that there is an illegal business going on at the Board of Supervisors that will affect you guys, Irvine, because you're part of a body. If you got cancer, um, if you got an aggressive cancer of the colon due to eating Twinkies, if you go on eating Twinkies more, it's going to spread throughout your whole body. When that's what's going on. The MO at the Board of Supervisors is whenever there's criminal uh, conduct, they circle the wagons around, they're cronies. And that's going to come back, the, the chickens are coming back to roost. So this little readout I'm giving you today is just a thumbnail sketch of what the coming fallout, you keep covering up this nonsense. You know, all our moms told us when we were growing up, be sure your sins will find you out. And they've been hiding this criminal real estate Racketeer, RICO, Racketeer Influence Knucklehead Organization. It's a new federal statute. And um, there's only so much you can cover up. When the people fear the government, there's tyranny. When the government fears the people, there's liberty. And I, and I gotta say one thing, I gotta commend your police department. Our church had a, a $50,000 know, packaging uh, food for the South African children and Irvine police were there. Thank you. Tracy Law, followed by S.G. Sarmiento. Good evening, City Council. My name is Tracy Law, and I've, been, I've spent the last five years living in the city of Irvine. Uh, I graduated from UC Irvine just last year of two degrees, where I served as the former student body president, uh, representing over 30,000 students. During my time as a student at UCI, I worked with student groups and local community organizations to register over 6,000 students to vote in the 2016 election. 3, 000, four, over 4,000 students to vote last year, and just this weekend we registered over hundreds of students to vote, and we're just getting started. The reason why we're doing that is because as young people, as students, we know how important it is to be fully aware of all the political conditions that are gonna impact our everyday lives and how important it is for us to be part of the decision-making process in that happening. I'm here today, this evening, with former and current UC Irvine students to talk about your consideration of imposing SB 54. As you already know by all the speakers who spoke before me, SB 54 makes our schools, libraries, hospitals, and public spaces safer for our community. When I read the memo that was sent out, uh, drafted by Mayor Wagner, I was frankly disappointed and disgusted. The language that the mayor used to justify this consideration of taking a stance against SB 54 is frankly despicable. Using language that attempts to paint immigrant residents with harmful stereotypes and descriptors sends a message to tens of thousands of Irvine students and residents that you are not here to protect or support them. If you didn't know by the folks who have spoken before me, UCI has one of the largest populations of undocumented students in the entire state. As an elected official, you all represent and are responsible for serving the entire urban community. 
and this includes undocumented students and residents living in the city. It is irresponsible and unacceptable for you to engage in actions that create fear and division in our community. We have friends, students, and families living here. SB 54 has already been ruled as constitutional by the federal court. I recommend that you all stand on the right side of history and follow this precedent. But more importantly, I urge you to not waste any more taxpayer money and resources by never, by ever putting this on the, by never putting this consideration on the agenda ever again. As UCI alumni and someone who has been living in Irvine for the past five years, and someone who has frankly seen many of you during your, your campaign runs and during and at candidate forums in the last couple of years, I'm incredibly disappointed in this consideration for even being on the agenda. Therefore, I urge you to take a strong stance in support of immigrant students and residents by supporting Sanctuary and SB 54 and never putting this consideration on the agenda ever again. Thank you. SG Sarmiento followed by Juta Gamboa. Hey, how's it going? Uh, I'm also a UCI alumni, lived here for many years, uh, still do business in Irvine. Um, I think we've all spent a lot of time in Irvine. Um, I think it's important to clarify that this didn't come out of the nothing. This is a, it, you know, Mayor Wagner you know, didn't just think this up. It's a very orchestrated, a very clearly orchestrated. There's a, there's a good LA Times article about it and I recommend it to everybody in the room. Um, it's a very orchestrated campaign um, by an organization called FAIR, um, which is a white supremacist organization and that's not hyperbole, it is a white supremacist think tank organization. Um, so it's not a coincidence that in these very complicated and divisive times that we live in, um, that this organization is focusing on Orange County and today has gone to the doorstep of our, of this city, of this beautiful city of Irvine that you all, I do believe, despite what, what's happening tonight in Irvine, I do believe you all love this city and want to lift it up for what it is. Um, but this organization has a very extreme anti-immigrant agenda. Um, and that, that needs to be made very clear when what, what they're asking you to endorse has nothing to do with policy. Um, we, can have, we can have a conversation about policy about SB 54, about sanctuary policies. Um, I think we can have a more fruitful conversation with law enforcement when we take them at their word when they say, that professional law enforcement will say, you can't do your job if you don't have trust from the community. If there's no public confidence from the community and the public institutions, they can't do their job, and they know that. And study after study shows that something about, like, last one I saw was 44% of, of communities that are afraid that their local police is talking to immigration enforcement will not pick up the phone and call police. And when somebody in your neighborhood doesn't pick up the phone because there's an emergency, either because they're a witness or a victim of the crime, that makes everybody less safe and that makes us live in the communities that are worse off than we all live tonight. Um, so we could have a conversation about policy, but this isn't about policy here. What they're proposing you and they're asking of you to do isn't about policy and it's sad. Um, and it's scary because that's what we're dealing with tonight. Um, so just to be very clear, and this is very clear to everybody in the room, and it will continue to become more clear if this comes up again, and we will have a huge sanctuary celebration here next time around if this comes up again, and Mr. Wagner, Honorable Mr. Wagner, you will be the one person we all remember, and not in a positive way. Thank you. Judy Gamboa, followed by Maggie McCarty. Good evening, City Council, Mayor and Mayor Pro Tem. My name is Jutta Gamboa. My husband and I have been Irvine residents since 1985. We have raised our five children here. I'm an immigrant. My husband is an immigrant. I'm, we are U.S. citizens. I'm also a former college professor at OCC, so, and I'm an alumni from UCI. And most of all, I'm a concerned citizen. Mayor Wagner, I'm glad you pulled the item SB 54 off the agenda. First, let me state some facts, and of course we have heard a lot of 
of it already, but you must all know that Irvine has been rated America's safest big city by the FBI crime ranking of cities over 100,000 in population every year since 2005, that the median income of Irvine is over $92,000 annually, and that the majority of Irvine residents, 54.7%, is non-white. We have great ethnic diversity in this city. So Irvine, as we heard, is safe, is affluent, and ethnically diverse. Irvine is not teeming with illegal criminal elements, roaming the streets, pouncing on unsuspecting citizens. So do not point paint a bleak picture of Irvine, you're wrong. Study the facts. Studies have shown that sanctuary cities are safer because they encourage good relationships between undocumented immigrants and law enforcement. 70% of undocumented immigrants surveyed are less likely to report a crime if they were the victim of it or of offer information about a crime they witnessed for fear police officers would find out about their immigration status. As a result, criminals thrive and the general public suffers. It is statistically proven that cooperation of undocumented immigrants with the police makes sanctuary cities safer. Dear Council, please don't attempt to make Irvine less safe by creating divisions by disrupting the cooperation of Irvine residents with our esteemed Irvine police force. Instead, keep the sanctuary status in place, keep Irvine safe, and keep the op cooperation between immigrants and the police force intact. Keep SB 54 off the agenda. Thank you for listening to me. Maggie McCarty. Hello. Um, first, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to listen to all of us. Uh, I wasn't going to come. I was driving home from school. I go to Irvine Valley College. Um, but I decided this is important to me, so I might as well make one last stop before I get home. Um, I don't have much planned for you, but I do want to say that I basically everything else that everybody has already said Listen to that. Um, also, if you look around the room, there's not a whole lot of young people, although there's some young people up in the front, but uh, issues like this and times and uh, opportunities like this to speak often fall on the shoulders of older populations uh, or people who are just more in tune with what's going on politically. Um, and I want to say that I think if you do revoke Irvine's sanctuary city status, you're going to have a, a hard problem to deal with because a lot of young people are going to be really upset with that because they're going to find out what happened. And it might just make it harder on all of us in the end. Um, so to save yourselves time and to keep the quality of Irvine consistent, uh, I would say do not revoke the status. Um, I had one other thing that I wanted to say. Well, I obviously am never. Uh, in direct threat of being deported. I was born here, I was born in New York City, I've, I'm an American citizen, and I'm a white woman. So I know that I don't really have a whole lot of problems coming for me. Uh, but my life is forever enriched for living in Irvine, California, meeting people from all over the world who I never would have met if I'd been living back in New Jersey, uh, back on a farm in New Jersey, so I'm glad that I live here. Um, and I just want Again, people to consider the fact that Irvine is and continues to be one of the safest cities in the nation. Uh, I don't think we've had a lot of continuing problems with immigrants. Um, and I do agree that this problem is arising as a result of what's going on in our highest office, in our, our, our federal government, uh, and problems with white supremacist groups and uh, racially motivated groups uh, coming to the forefront. and. This, this wouldn't have been probably a discussion three or four years ago. But now that it is, I'm here to say 
we need to do something about it, and we need to keep our cities safe the way that they are. Um, anyway, that's all I really have to say, but I appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to me. I'm sure you've been having a long night, so uh, protect immigrants, protect our people, um, and stand for the right values. Thank you. All right, thank you. That concludes, that concludes public comments and the agenda. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Moved, second, all in favor? Opposed, abstentions, matter carries unanimously.